Mm-hmm. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. We wanted to take some time. We were supposed to be on about 10 minutes ago and got all kinds of delays with everything happening with our, our technology. It seems like technology gets in the way of things a lot of the time. Well, it's the technology or the operator that gets in the way, but but uh, we'll blame it on technology because I don't think it's my fault. So ever. So that's it. But um, we do want to welcome you. This is a, um, a broadcast that I've been doing just just honestly about every day this week. It seems like we've been doing a lot of, of broadcasting with people from literally around the nations. And I had a, a really wonderful friend from Cork, Ireland that was on. Shane Kelly was on a few days ago. Um, we are going to be having from... Um, from asking Moscow, Russia, this coming Tuesday, we are going to be having um, Vladimir and Tatiana, um, who are wonderful friends of ours, and um, Le- Nesselinov is their last name, and then Mark Crawford out of Australia is going to be with us. There's just a, a lot of people that are going to be joining us over the next few days. I've got to David Crone from Vacaville joining us next Wednesday, and then I think we're going to be ending up finishing up the week if I can get it scheduled with Bobby Connor. So that's going to be um, a wonderful wonderful treat as well. What we're doing is trying to connect people with the heart of God and what God has been saying um, during this season and this time with um, everything that's been going around the nations. And we want to hear the voice of the Lord for this season. Uh, I I titled this series of of talks, um, Times and Seasons, because it's it's an absolute value that we plug into the heart of the kingdom for such a time as this. And um, there was an anointing that rested on the, sec- the the sons of Issachar. The whole tribe operated out of this anointing. And, and of the sons of Issachar, the Bible says this, they knew the times and seasons and they knew what answer they should give to the nations. And so if there was ever a time that we needed to know the answers and the seasons to the seasons and the times, it's now. And so one of the things that I like doing as much as I can is to bring in a fresh prophetic voice in to, to talk with us as a church and now on the video as a larger church family, since we can't gather in our building, we're just trying to do as much as we can on media. But uh, one of the, the greatest privileges we've had to, to know anyone in the prophetic world has been Chafin Henry. He's been just a, a constant um, voice of encouragement to, my, to Nancy and I. And he's also been just a huge voice of encouragement of the prophetic um, to speak the word in season in our lives when we needed, honestly, sometimes just to hear it the most. And so we we want to welcome you, Chafin. Welcome to, to um, just another session where we can gather and talk. And so tell us what's going on. There's a lot going on in your life right now. So tell us a little bit about all that. So Thank you, Pastor. Um, and uh, very privileged to indeed be here on this uh, live video with you. And uh, it's a blessing. Yes, a uh, lot of things are going on in our lives. We we just had a baby boy. <laughs> that is, um, so on April 6th. So our life has been really busy since then. Um, and uh, our world is uh, focus. There's a lot of focus going on around a lot of things. But this is one new focus that we have an additional member in our family now. Oh, who needs to be... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, you do. It, it, his name is Ezekiel. Yes. Matthew, is that right? Yes. Ezekiel Matthew Henry. Yeah. Yeah. We are so excited for you and Nimi. So, yeah. Well, while we're uh, we're talking, we've got about 17 or so folks on. I'd, I'd encourage you guys, if you will, um, if you're on Facebook or, or YouTube, if you would um, share um, this broadcast with as many of your friends as you can and just, just share it out so that we can have as many people as we can connected. That would be awesome. So what what else has been happening with you, Chathan? What do you think that the Lord is saying right now with the everything that's happening around the world? So it's um these are definitely interesting times, but um I think we we spoke about this even last time when we went live and uh it is still so profound that this season is indeed the finest hour for the church. I believe this is the season where the church will definitely focus on the main priority that is the Lord and his dealings with the body and the whole world to grab their attention. It oh. is already happening. It's already happening and um, we can either we can either as a church we can either become very um, exactly how the media wants to be 
isolated and shut down or you know we can we can use this as the finest hour to be a light a voice uh, in fact the lord jesus said that we are the light and we are also the salt so so a salt the work of a salt is usually in india where i come from we use salt for preserving things you know we preserve we pickle mangoes we pickle lime you know and salt is the main ingredient to preserve things for a longer time yeah and i think and i think the church is the salt we can preserve this world by by showing them the true true light which is the lord himself and um, show his light through our life you know become the light that god has called us to be in this current hour and uh, not shrink back in fact i actually arise and shine for the light of the lord has come upon you this is our this is that hour yeah yeah I, i'm in 100% agreement with you this is absolutely not a time to shrink back in who we are it's it's uh because right now there are more questions being asked about who god is and and where he's at in the middle of all this because this thing is creating a lot of trauma in the lives of people around the nations. I mean, let's just be completely real about that. There are yes. a lot of people who are who are experiencing tons of anxiety over the the sickness and the disease itself. Whether whether it's touched their lives or family, the threat of it is creating fear and creating anxiety. But um, what what we're noticing probably as much as anything, and probably even to, to a greater degree, is the kind of economic turmoil that this um, virus has created in terms of the pandemic moving across the nations because businesses have been shut down now for a couple of weeks and and it's really starting to create some havoc with people and wondering about the the uncertainty of tomorrow and and so there's a lot of trauma that's happening emotionally with people um, what would you say to, to folks that are experiencing a, a trauma in their life that that's like that and um, who are looking for answers in the middle of this storm you know, Pastor, the first, um, I would like to quote a scripture to answer every, you know, thing that we're talking here, uh, just to back it up with the scripture. The Bible says, you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, Lord. You know, he will keep him in perfect peace. Yeah. So the, the keeping comes from the Lord. He will keep us in perfect peace, provided our mind is stayed on him. Now, anything that is man-made, one day or the other, everything crumbles down. Uh, because whatever man makes is not eternal. Whatever man gives is never eternal. But whatever God gives, it always has an eternal mark on it. Everything. Whatever God gives you right. has, is, has eternal qualities. The peace he gives is not dependent on your circumstance or your surroundings. It's dependent on who he is for you. But if we have a peace that is anchored in what is going on around us, it's very hard to find peace because it is situational. It can change like the wind. It can change like, like a season in and out. But he who, his mind is stayed on him. The Lord will keep him in perfect peace. It's the Lord's doing. And that peace, also the Bible says, surpasseth all understanding, meaning, this peace is not coming because you have an understanding of what's going on, but right. this peace is beyond understanding. So this is where the spiritual dimension comes in. There is a peace, which is a spiritual peace, which is outside of understanding, the realm of understanding, human uh, logic, human explanations. Yeah, yeah. Because it surpasses to the next dimension where you can say, I'm resting my case, my life in the hands of the one who made me. That way the world can, can escape the current, uh, you know, chaos and, and, and all, the, all of these things. Now to answer the question of, if you look at the whole Bible history, pastor, like you, you, you know, like you have preached this many times, you know, uh, how every time God wanted to attract his bride, his children back to him, and every time there was a mediator or any, any other system that became more prominent than him, you know, eventually it crumbled and eventually they cried out to God. It's, a, it's, like, a, it's like a love story. Like people uh, 
turn back to him when 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 they really say okay i now i know who's the real source i go back to him i feel this is a moment of awakening for all of us um and those who are in him will 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 still see solutions through this yeah 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 go ahead i, I don't want to cut you off yeah um i i i've been reading a lot um of the word you know which i i i kind of uh, meditate on the scriptures a lot one of the things i noticed in i keep reading from the bible from the beginning to the end and then i go to portions where the lord you know prompts me sometimes i read that during the time of joseph when there was a when there was a famine in the land the bible actually says the whole world came to egypt that is that is startling that's actually it's 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 crazy good to hear that the whole world came to egypt mm -hmm. but the question is why did the whole world come to egypt did they come because of pharaoh no they came because a man called joseph brought the solution of god to them yeah, yeah. now we as the church if you look at it like this you know just just drawing some parallels now, if if the church is like the joseph okay it is still in the egypt like the world they can come to us for solution provided we like joseph hear the voice of god and do i see it toward a trend in the scripture god always says if you will diligently listen to me that requirement never changed even when the lord jesus came he said my sheep hear my voice in fact he went on to say don't worry about tomorrow but in all of it he always kept saying don't miss me he kept on saying you know people come and say um the day will come people will say we played the flute we we spoke everything but you would not hear because you don't want to hear but i think this is an opportunity for us to say hey um the things i trusted if they are crumbling then what do i need to trust where should my peace be relied on where should my trust be placed have i missed it and we should just recalibrate and say okay let me start looking into the god who's the source of all things yeah that shift yeah. that shift that shift itself will cause many people to come out of their panic panic is literally a state where you feel hopeless where you feel there's nothing else left for you yeah yeah there's i'm telling you this is a real because a wonderful article the I uh, thought we disappeared for a minute, but he, he came up with an article a few days ago talking about the power of, of fear being much more contagious and much more demonstrative in terms of a, its negative effect on this this world than than this virus could ever have been. And um, yes. and, and that's absolutely the truth. I, I love the example that you gave with, with Joseph stepping into Egypt um, and the whole world coming to the nation because of a man, like you said, and um, because he'd been given a warning of what was coming and he'd also then prepared for what was coming and he had a solution for what was coming. And, and so in today's age for the body of Christ, I think that's a real key thing that we need to be focusing on is, OK, Jesus, what what kind of answers do you have from the body of Christ for this generation and for this season? We need to be those who provide solutions. I've got good friends that call it solutionaries. You know where where we yeah solutionaries instead of revolutionaries you know we're, we're solutionaries <laughs> so we're yeah. we're providing solutions to the problem that are that are already going on, um, and so it's it's a really really big deal that you and I begin to plug into that and um, ask the Lord what the role of the body of Christ should be in the middle of a storm, and um, that we be be that an answer and so, um, and then with with the the folks. Uh, for those who know Christ, obviously the, the default is turn your face toward God in the middle of a storm. Yeah. yeah. Um, the the thing that I am trying to bolster, if you will, from the perspective of the body of Christ, however, is 
providing the answers for those who are looking for them who have not yet come into the kingdom because they're everywhere around us, people who are lost and people who are trying to figure this thing out. And they don't know, you know, that they're supposed to set their eyes on God and that if they will acknowledge him in all their ways, he'll direct their paths. They, they've never even heard that scripture. They've never read it. And they, they don't even know that he is the source of peace in the middle of the storm. And so yeah. um, this is because of that, this is the time where the, the people of God need to be, I think, the most vocal, not in an arrogant way or in a, a, a way that's like, you know, here, take this, you know, kind of thing. But in a way of showing love, mercy and compassion, where we're speaking out the truths of God in ways that people are absolutely being captivated by not just the words that are coming out of our mouths and the 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 positions that we're taking that are all biblical, but they they are witnessing firsthand the peace of God that we carry. And um, yeah. be because if we have peace in the middle of a storm, it will attract people around us. Um, right. There's a there's a, a group of folks in, in um, I, I think they're in Denmark right now. We, I just got off of another call with some good friends of ours out of California, and we were talking mm. lots of testimonies about what's going on. There's there's a couple in Denmark right now that, you know, they decided in because they can't gather there as well, that they would do a, a drive in church, you know, kind of where everybody comes in the parking lot and they got out with their speakers. And anyway, next thing you know, it's attracted uh, the the national news from Denmark has come in and they've done a, 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 a story about them. And before it's over with, they've they've had um, seven hundred thousand views. <laughs> this is this is a new church plant um, in in uh, Denmark with less than a hundred people, and the the whole all of Europe that that caught this story are tuned in to what this couple has to say because they're full of the the message of hope. And the full of the message of promise in a world where people are absolutely desperately to know how do I get out of this thing and what do we see in terms of of God moving? So I've been hugely encouraged over the last few days to hear what God's doing around the nations, and um, yeah. you know, there's there's just creative ways right now that are springing up all over and how we can share the, the the kingdom through media and through little simple things like gathering a group of people on a parking lot instead of inside of a church building. But yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. So, some amazing stuff. Right. The, the, what, one of the things I see is the church, when I say church, you know, I'm not, I'm calling the believers as the church, those who believe in the Lord and who are a body, who are the body. This, this hour should be used wisely. You know, uh, be, you know, when there is wisdom, people are attracted to it. You know, wisdom um, attracts the world. Yeah. Not spirituality. Yeah, yeah, that's the truth right there. Yeah. Um, so, what kind of wisdom or or be the church tuning into like um that that example that you just shared what happened in denmark is actually a wisdom they they got a wisdom from god to do that and now they're becoming the light in that particular area and they're hitting the national news that's wisdom right there from god using them to 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 how do I say this to intercept the airwaves instead of news? Everything that the news media has to offer is fear and pandemic and what is going wrong. But yeah, all yeah. of a sudden now there is another voice of wisdom, which is saying, Hey, shift your focus. And now in midst of thousands of vo voices, screaming fear, anxiety, and panic, one voice shot up, you know, in a, in a parking lot and said, Hey, listen, there is hope. Listen, there's somebody else who came and gave their life for you. And all of a sudden, that one blick, blickering light of hope began to grab the whole nation's attention. This is such a classic example. Like how, now, now how can now everybody who's called by the Lord right now in their apartment, condominiums, you know, um, in their streets, 
in their neighborhoods how can we use this as the wisest finest hour like what ways can we seek to promote that which is already on us yeah yeah you know the thing about god's mercy is and favor is the more you speak of it the more it activates and the more it exemplifies it just keeps expanding the nature of god is whatever you adore in him whatever you begin to speak of him it just begins to expand so i think now if we can use that for our transformation use it wisely and start emitting those waves out of us you know call it like a radio wave or something you just start emitting out of us eventually we are going to catch the people around us they are going to see and they are not going to be forced into it they are going to look at you and say hey um it feels good to be around you it feels so hopeful it feels so peaceful it's as if like somebody talks to you for 10 minutes and they say oh my god i just i i just feel like my all the things i carried is just put down yeah then that will make them curious not forcibly make them curious they'll say what is it that you know and then you can eventually and undoubtedly unmistake you know without any mistakes you can tell them look look the source i have is this because i have somebody who is the lord god over my life that's the way i think we should um, really use this finest ever in fact um, pastor i don't know if you remember when i was in salt lake city uh, uh, utah you uh, you had preached a message once uh, i think you preached a message on jesus christ the desire of the nations right so i think right now the nations eventually should make him their desire right yeah yeah so so that the word desire is a very strong word in the sense if you look at the world right now all of these days before this whole pandemic hit the planet the desires were everywhere like um of course money money is a commodity money there was everything was so scattered now all of a sudden you need solution you need wisdom you need the way out now their desire is shifting and the book of isaiah says you know like he's going to become the desire of the nation so all of a sudden now the desire is going back shrinking back and then now they're saying we need we need more than all this this we have ever had and that's how and every believer can promote the promote christ the desire of the nations around him yeah yeah i think it's a really key word yeah, like really in your city yeah 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 the the other thing i was thinking about about jesus in the I, i honestly think that in the season that it's creating an awakening around the nations um yeah. this coronavirus it has has had the impact um what 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 the secular news media is not telling you that is as well as there's all of this hoarding going on where people are trying to buy up every roll of toilet paper that they can find on the planet and that's globally it's not just happening here in the United States what what they're not telling you is that like in Walmart the 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 shelves are completely empty with the search for the word of god bibles are not anywhere to be found on shelves in 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 supermarkets and grocery stores anywhere in our country right now why is that because people are looking for the answer to their problem they're looking for solutions to to what they're feeling and so in these moments then and this is the key i think that i've been trying to 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 capture and to try to make sure that we as the body of christ capture wherever we're at if it's in chicago if it's in utah or in in the nations of the earth because there is a hunger that's being stirred up right now and it's like the the nations of the earth are being held at bay To, from being able to come into the house of God where typically all of that took place. So they're running to the internet, they're running to to places and and avenues where they can hear the word of God and and truth spoken. But there's a, there's coming a time when the the authorities and the those that are legislating things are going to lift this ban on on public meetings and they're going to say okay, we feel like we can start having public meetings again. and i i personally believe that much like we saw during during 911 with the 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 attack on new york city um that 
there there will be a, a running because after that there was a hunger in the United States where people literally ran to church and it, it lasted for two or three weeks because they were they were thought oh no we're going into a time of war all of this uncertainty you know this feels very apocalyptic this feels very much like the end of the earth with with you know these terrorists that are coming against the nation and and in much the same way there will be a lot of people who will run to the church when the doors open. Um, there's there's been some prophetic voices. I'll get to the end of that in a moment. But there's been some prophetic voices right now that we've been listening to, that have been talking about um, uh, th this um, five five is is what one of them was talking about, and he he believes that what we're going to see is a is a resurgence of being able to come back to the church. I hope it is honestly. I, I honestly hope it's before then. But but May the fifth. That's a Sunday, and that there's a, a great a great place uh, of of you know. The, the fifth month, the fifth day, five, five is what he kept hearing. And we also know that five is this message of, of grace and a number for grace being revealed on the earth. And I, I honestly hope that that's it. But he said he saw with that, he saw just a, a influx of people literally flooding into churches all over the world, looking for answers and looking for, for the hope that they've been missing in this season. And so my prayer, and it'll be the prayer for, um, our church and the church that you're a part of and churches of, of people that were around, around the, the yeah. world is that when people do come back, that they don't come back to a system that looks like business as usual. That, right. that yeah. you know, we can't afford to drop the ball on this one. In other words, when people come back, what we hand them in terms of, of, of the kingdom, I believe has to look like the kingdom, which is full of power and full of authority and full of right. and pull, full of the supernatural of God. Otherwise, they're going to say, yep, it looks the same way that it did when I was here 10 years ago, and much the same as what happened on 9-11. They stayed for two weeks, and they said, I was expecting more, and they left. But if we can prepare ourselves right now in this season to be people who, who pray and be people who ask the Lord to move, I do believe that he will move with power. And we need this is an hour before ever, before any other time that we need to see demonstrations of yeah. the power and glory of heaven in the middle of the church gathering in, in ways that absolutely wreck people in, in, in a good way. You know, where Holy Spirit That's comes in word. and it's blows the place up with his yeah. presence, blows the place yeah. up with his, his power. So yeah. that's what I'm praying for is that we we be a people that, that when when this thing turns back on, we don't hand this in because if we don't take care of them and it's not just taking care of their meetings. We've got to take care of them relationally and get them the kinds of help they need with their families and with their lives and, and plug them into networks that are going to be life sustaining and life giving. So a lot to think about and a lot to prepare for in the next few days, honestly. Yes. And also um, I, I, I do believe there is the ministry of the Holy spirit is not a ministry of the soul. It's not just stuck in a soulish realm. When the Holy Spirit comes down to minister through the leaders in the congregation, it is life-giving. It is a revival spirit. It kind yeah. of uh, ignites people on fire. Now, now the, the church world, when they open the doors back, people are hungry, as you said. Or they're all going to rush in. So right now, all the preachers, including us, you know, all of us, we should actually be using this hour as the hour of transformation. In fact, Pastor, my my spiritual father, Prophet Shaiju Matthew, which you you are a good friend of him, you know, yeah. he was saying he was saying this is the hour of transformation. In fact, if I if I can share this quickly, few months ago in one of the church meetings, he randomly on a on a February. He came to church and he posted a big slide. On the slide, he said, "the the life cycle of a butterfly." Okay, and he put uh, how how there is a time where everybody everything goes into a cocoon, and then comes out new life of a butterfly. And he said, either people will die in this, or they'll get transformed and come out as a butterfly. And uh, you know how um, everybody gets excited, you know, when they hear a word like that. But now. If you look at it now, prophetically speaking, now the whole world, now the church is like entered a stage as just as you said, you know, we are all cocooned now. We are all in isolation. We are all in inside our house of four walls. Now, when the doors open, 
either are you going to come out like a butterfly or are you never never going to come out so for that we need to use this hour wisely as an hour of transformation we have to transform ourselves and as you said if we are on fire we can set others on fire yeah. i like to say this it's only a dry leaf that catches fire so we you know if people are dry they're ready to catch fire but we need to go and like the fire now yeah it's it's absolutely the truth it cuz i i do believe it i i believe that we can we can um if if we drop the ball then then we'll lose all of the forward momentum that this was supposed to create i mean the enemy yes the the enemy would would like to kill still and destroy but jesus said in john 10:10 10, 10, that i've come that you might have life and that life more abundant and that's just everything that he does is in the realm of abundance with with speaking of more and so i i just um really feel like that um that we need uh, individually corporately that we need to make sure that when we like, like like as you said when we come from the through the other side of this thing from, from yes that we we really do come out of it with with a, a life-giving flow and so life-giving flow yeah and so in the middle of that then it requires i, I let me just say this I, i really want to encourage people to meter very very carefully what you allow into your spirit in this time it, this is not a time to be this disheartened and to be um brought down in your your feelings of emotional um fear and anxiety because you've plugged into too much secular media um i i'm i'm really really telling you clearly that this is not a time to plug into all that this is a time for you to to plug into the word of god the heartbeat and passion of god the worship of god and because in in that um it's going to bring life to you like you've never even known in the middle of a storm if you plug into the wrong kinds of information you will start looking like the information that you're viewing you know it's yeah. ju- it's just a, it's just a fact you will you will without even recognizing it you'll start picking up the mindsets of the people that are propagating the message that you're listening to and so make sure that you spend a lot of time plugged into the right source of information that that is bringing hope i was um thinking about this passage in in romans chapter 5 verse 5 um which again is is a 55 um that that uh, I thought was interesting um and and this hope is not dis- is, is not a disappointing fantasy because we can now experience the endless love of God escaping into our hearts through the holy spirit who lives in us and this hope is not a disappointing fantasy and so um in terms of our responsibility as the body of Christ I believe that you and I we we talked about a little bit about being ambassadors but um um we i think that we need to become ambassadors of hope that that this hope isn't a disappointing hope but this hope is a hope that brings an endless cascading experience of love of god through our hearts and the holy spirit who lives inside of us and so it's withdrawal it's time to hide it's not, let's see yeah disappeared for a minute but it's not a time to do any of that this is the time to plug into the heartbeat and passion of Jesus Christ. And so um we've got um a few minutes left with with where we are going to be trying to to wrap some things up today but anything else that's been on your heart that's heavy that uh, you you feel like God is doing and that um you wanted to maybe declare or decree I I really believe there is a wind that has already began blowing across the nations. There's a wind that is blowing right now. It's actually blowing and uh people who have their sails up will catch it yeah and the sail being up is nothing but as you said being ambassadors of christ in fact an ambassador of a nation usually brings uh, everything about a nation but an ambassador of christ brings everything about him so if we can catch that wind to be the ambassadors it's already here it's actually blowing right now In fact I I was speaking about the word saying April 7th onwards a wind will blow um to the April 14th so I am still feeling very stirred in my heart that by April 14th there is going to be shifts that are going to happen in the next few days it's not very far it's not very far the shifts will happen but but I really believe the shift will continue to happen through the month of May and things are going to happen but right now we have to catch that wind yeah as you said as you said what are we tuning into we have to 
tune into what god is saying in this hour and first and foremost i think i want to encourage the viewers because we have few more minutes god is for us not against us yeah. i want this to sink into people's heart mind and their spirit man god is for us and not against us they need to know that the god of heaven the lord jesus is for us if they start up with a notion that god is against us you cannot go anywhere further than that oh man it's truth yeah the bottom line is you start with knowing that god is for me and not against me that's your starting point if you know that he is for you now you'll begin a journey with him in fact for the many who will be watching this later you need to know that god is for you even in this hour this very minute the heartbeat of the lord jesus beats for you now yeah. and you need to say i'm going to catch that wind and not the negative wind of the media which wants to steal kill and destroy but you have to shift your sail to catch this wind where he's saying i am for you not against you for you knowing that now you catch that wind there's a way the holy spirit will guide you that from coming out of this will begin to fly yeah yeah that's so you know, sur- survival sometimes survival the 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 word survival is just barely making but the word revival is even if something is dead it's bringing it back to life mm. this mode i want to prophesy this pastor this is you know what i've been feeling in my spirit what people are calling survival god wants to change it to revival yeah that's yeah. the word prophetic yeah. word now for the body of christ yeah. if they go into survival mode they catch the other wind and they're just saying let me barely make it but we catch the wind of the holy spirit he's going to change i'm prophesying this over somebody right now you know you need to decode this word and receive it in your spirit this is not for your survival but this is for your revival catch this and know that god is for you and not against you oh man and good the very pit will be your promotion the very lockdown will be for your freedom there is freedom that will come you know because freedom is not something man can give when god declares it is indeed freedom yes it is yeah yeah I love that from from survival to revival. Revival. Yes, yeah. that's that's the word in the hour. I really feel that strongly in my spirit. Yeah. If you are in survival mode, you miss the wind, but in that survival mode if you catch the wind, you get into the revival wind. Yeah, and and it's 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 so much dependent upon how we position ourselves in in the way that we think because you know, we're all processing the same things and there will be people who will plug into this thing and say, "Oh, this is a divine opportunity for instance for me to be launched into a higher pro- yeah. a higher destiny." And there will be other people who will just they literally will will like bury their head in the sand and it, and it will be for them like survival, 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 survival. And the problem is that when you have your head in that space, you'll never be able to obtain the kinds of blessings that God has for your for your destiny for your future. It's it's okay to to have seasons where you're like, you know, yeah, I just got to hunker down and get through this. But at some point if you don't get your head up, lift up your head, lift up your gaze, lift up your eyes to what the Lord is doing, you can yes. you can miss the move of God all around you because you have just been so consumed by the circumstances and condition of of what you're going through that you don't ever see the greater purpose in why you were placed on the earth and why you're going through those things. and um so that's a huge word chatin for people to grab a hold of because yeah. and uh, with that um i i pass now it's shifting i i don't know if you sense it now everything is shifting prophetically now because we started to release the message of the prophetic right now uh the generals of the past they re- many of them released a lot of prophetic words and some of them said in a century from now there will be a healing revival that will come back on this planet you know yeah now, now sometimes we say okay it's already been a century plus 10 years but uh, nothing is happening yet you know um but god has this way of working 
uh, this is not my revelation uh, this this particular thing i this is a very prophetic word for somebody and a lot of viewers who's going to watch now or later this is not my um, revelation it is uh, from my spiritual father uh, his revelation but i do want to share this here when god said through abraham that he's going to deliver his people out of egypt he said it would be 400 years and but when they got delivered it was 430 years we can say god was 30 years late okay or if you look into it god was 10 years early when he released moses to operate but they chased away their sent help that is so deep now the church the church the revivalists have prophesied and the people have prophesied in the past like amy simple mcpherson there are a lot of prophecies that this planet will have another awakening oh yeah these people now pastor i have you know like we we have spoken many times talking about revival history when these people prophesied they were not prophesying as a man they were indeed prophesying by the spirit of god now we can either look into their prophecies and say oh where is this god of awakening where is this revival or we can check and look back and say hey everything is coming to this epic time everything is shrinking back right now the desires of the nation are changing the church is becoming in an awakening mode everybody is taking things seriously and everybody is getting ready to minister to the spirit and god is pushing us into this epic epic point of time Ooh. where that prophecies are about to glow now oh, we man. now we can either say god is late or we can say the church was not ready now we are getting ready so god is getting us ready now god is saying now you rise up enough of enough of uh, taking it easy now you get up and do what i have given you as power and authority to do on this planet earth the desire of the nations release it i yeah. really feel that and i feel that and the other prophetic word i did have in my spirit is america you know like the nation where we are in right now you know pastor in 2006 september 26th of 2006 when i was i was in bangalore india i never had even sat on a airplane to fly out of my city i had a visitation from the lord and the lord told me that he showed me a vision and he showed me blood drops flaw, falling on canada and he showed me whirlwind popping up in places in america until all the small whirlwinds got together and became a mighty storm i believe god is ushering us towards that yeah yeah i do too we are uh um yeah there's there's been a lot happened since since that that young man in 2006 heard heard the voice of the lord <laughs> until you stepped into this this season where you're at now but yeah uh, and powerful word then, and it it is coming to fruition even right now as we speak that God is pouring out his spirit on the nations of the earth and so i'm super excited about what he's doing honestly it's it's not a time to to hold back it's not a time to have a withholding spirit or a time to go into like um, poverty mode where you try to to hold on to everything this is the time to have extreme generosity in every part of your life extreme generosity in your faith and uh make sure that wherever you can i mean this thing is going to change the face of the way that the church looks i, th- I really do think that I, i don't think that we're probably going to look the same after we come through this because there will be people who are who are drawn into um a, a media encounter and a media experience with christ that that um, is just going to continue to grow with with people who become creative with this thing that we've been given called media and so that's going to be exciting but um i'm super happy about what we see forming um a lot of people would say yeah this is going to be the the church's demise when when they have to close up all their doors and nothing's you know able to get out of the church but because of media you know there are people all over the earth that are hearing the good news and and hearing the truth of of what God is saying and I'm not talking about secular media I'm talking about this media environment called the internet and with all the different avenues that people have to be able to broadcast the good news and the truth of the kingdom and so um I'm I'm probably more optimistic than ever honestly about the 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 message of hope and how it's being released and the creativity that God is creating of from people all over the planet right now to to share his good news and then um 
you know, as you said, that that there is this expectation of people who are looking for an encounter and they will find him because they're hungry and thirsty. That dry leaf thing, you know, a dry leaf will catch on fire. Um, a, yeah, a thir- you don't have to force it on them. They yeah, are ready for it. A thirsty person will find water. You know, it's kind of like, you know, yeah. uh, you know, uh, with, with, with livestock at least, you know, if you get, they can smell it miles and miles and miles away when they're thirsty and they will, they will find it, you know? And yeah. so, so the people who are who are hungry and thirsting right now for the righteousness of God to be revealed in their lives, they're they're going to find Him because He's that good, and His heart is always to lead to bless them. And so, um, like I said, we're just in a in a great great season, and we need to make sure that we're doing our part to to. And I hear a word. I hear a word called distribution center. I think this is one of the prophetic words passage that you have you know like you know always hosted distribution center. God is making it now, actually. Yeah. You know, in fact, the way you're sitting now, I'm looking all of a sudden. The Holy Spirit is showing me the clock behind you is circular. It's like looks like a, a like a wheel with a spoke. That's how it looks, actually. The 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 very uh, timepiece that you're sitting uh, in front of, the one which is behind you, it looks like a distribution spoke, multi-spoke wheel wheel. I I I really believe that this this time and hour. God is going to distribute. We, we are prophesying right now. If, yeah. if people are sensitive to hear this, this is the time that God is distributing his grace, gracelets. You know, the, the word gifts of the Holy Spirit are nothing but gracelets. They are a particular grace given to release the voice or the or the attributes of God in a certain way. That is the meaning of gifts of the Holy Spirit. So this hour... I, I really believe when we switch into from survival to revival mode, uh, I'm telling somebody who's watching us right now that all of a sudden the gifts of the Holy Spirit mm, will begin to glow through your life. You know, you might have attended schools, you might have attended, um, gotten many impartations many times you've desired, but all of a sudden now the gifts of the Holy Spirit will begin to function through your life without difficulty without performance, with yeah. ease, the grace will flow because this is the hour the Lord is calling us, the ambassadors of Christ, to begin to glow with light, to glow with hope, with glow with solution. So you will begin to emit this out of you. This is not to shut us down. This is the time actually God is calling us, calling you to become a distribution center. Everybody who's hearing us, Pastor Shannon, at the sound of our voice, we decree and declare that you shall become a distribution center of God's grace. Yeah, yeah, that is so good. May you begin to switch yeah. out of your survival mode and get into the revival mode. Transform from survival to revival and begin to release the Holy Spirit wind through you. Lift up your sail. Catch him. Now he's, he's blowing over all of you. Thank yeah. you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. That is so good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you prophesied um, just now a few over us, and, and it's a word, honestly. I, I don't, I don't know that you had even heard it. I don't know how many times we've talked about some different things, but um, years ago, it, it was, it was prophesied over our our lives and our house that we would become this distribution hub, if you will. Wow. And, and um, you know, Jesus. I prophesied. It started in, in honestly, in, in September of two thousand one. We talked about your two thousand six time. In September 2001, I was sitting in a meeting in Sao Paulo, Brazil, when yeah. when a prophetic voice stood in front of me. She's a, a woman who's done a ton of prophetic ministry. She was raised as a as a prophetess by Bobby Connor, and yeah. uh, she she stood in front of me and she says, um, like David, who was hidden in the. I've got this memorized because for the next probably six or seven months or, or even a year after every person that stood in front of us that prophesied prophesied exactly this word, and it said this. It said like David who was hidden in the caves of Adullam. So God, wow. like, so God has Come hidden on. you and others like you for an appointed time and an a appointed season mm. to come. And so, and then it says, and she says, and you have been called to be like the center hub of a multi-spoked wheel that would be a distribution center to the nations of God, of the earth. And, um, mm. and so, so here we are, you know, I'm 20, 20 years later nearly and um we feel like honestly that that um the 
the covers have just now begun to begin to lift in terms of being hidden because we, we, we carried in our hearts far more than we saw actually manifesting. And um, when you've had a lot prophesied over you, that can be very, very frustrating unless you have the purpose. Yeah. Of, I know because we've had this discussion with you about where at, where is God? You know, I've got all this in me. And, and but, but I do know this, that, that if you're patient to, to make sure that you bloom in your season, then you won't shortcut your destiny by 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 a premature birth, because oh, that's so powerful. If, if yeah. you have yeah. if you have a premature birth in your ministry or in the season that you're in and launch too quickly, then you won't have the foundations built inside of you that will cause you to be sustainable during life and ministry. And so we've been prophesied over of us for years and years and years about what God was doing and what God was going to do, and we've had. Our, our seasons where we've we've enjoyed the fruit of labor and we've enjoyed the fruit of ministry and we've seen some amazing things happen, but it has not been the kinds of things that were prophesied over us for years. But the thing that sustained us was this issue of being hidden for a season until the proper time and the proper moment. And then God would bring you out of that season of hiddenness into a light. I don't know who that's for, but I really believe that there's some people that we're speaking to on, online today who you're in seasons of hiddenness as well, but you look at it as though it's been a punishment of heaven, and it's not. It is God sustaining you so that when you are launched, that you launch with everything necessary to cause you to really begin to shine with real pure power, pure pure anointing, with a, with a the right kinds of things built inside of you that you won't self-destruct you or hurt others. Because honestly, the anointing in the hands of people who are not able to walk with with integrity or walk with... with um, uh, purpose and form, you, you you will have the the ability and the propensity to be able to hurt people with the anointing that you carry that's supposed to be helping people. And so I'm, I really do feel like that's a good word for somebody as well. But but we are we are um, I, I believe that we were created honestly for such a time as we're living in right now. The you know the such a time as this thing. You know we've heard it prophesied over and over, but it really is true. Uh, there are there are times and seasons when we are. Um, in preparation mode and other times when we're in the mode to be released. And I, I believe that this is a, a release season for the body of Christ to, to step into fullness. So, yeah. Yeah. That's not such a good word, pastor. Such yeah. A rich word. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, we're probably going to wrap things up here for today. We'll, we'll be back. And um, if you, if you guys would um, you and, and get online, you can share this with your friends and, We'd really appreciate that so that we can have others connect with us. But uh, just get on and share it on Facebook. That would be great. If you're connected by, by uh, YouTube, if you would like the, pro the, uh, the program, that would be awesome. And subscribe to the program. That would be as good as well. It's connected to, to um, our God's Place channel. But uh, Chathan, I really do love you. I'm super excited about, about your new little boy, Ezekiel. And uh, he's, yeah. we can't wait to be able to see him. But uh and we, we can't believe how old Ellison is at this point. It's he's two and a half, so he's a thing called well. family with you. And you've gone from from you know hardly hardly knowing that this was even possible to now being the father of two. Let's look at you. So <laughs> that's pretty exciting. And so we really are. We're we're thrilled about what he's doing in you and, and love you like crazy. We've, we've already said as soon as the, the, the ban and the travel ban is lifted, we're looking forward to getting you back into to Utah and having you and Nimi come and, and come and share with what God is doing here. So that'll be a, a really good time as well. But yeah, anything that you want to close with? Yes, I, I um, thank you, Pastor, for all those uh, you know, nice, you know, kind words that you've always been so kind to us. Um, this this um, word is ringing in my heart just to tell somebody who's listening to us or people who will be listening to us later. There are, there are revelations of God, the Lord Jesus, which he wants to give you. That one who's watching me or listening to me. Sometimes, you know, we might know a thing, but it might not be a revelation yet. This season, the Lord is using this time in your life to have a real encounter with the Lord full of revelation. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to, I'm going to want you to ponder this. The Bible says the lamb of God was slain before the foundations of the world. 
and now you know and now um john goes in the island of patmos he has a revelation of jesus christ and then in the heaven he sees a lamb that is slain yeah god lives outside of time but god had to give him a, re- a fresh revelation of who he was so i believe there's a revelatory realm that is opening up for somebody who is watching today because god is going to give you a revelation of himself which you would have known for years but it will become so new then you'll begin to walk in this power and authority which you never walked before because you'll understand him by your heart it is no more here it gets into here in yeah, your spirit yeah. that will shift everything that is transformation that is shifting and yeah. i and pastor shan and i we agree and declare over some of you that truly let this be a season of from survival to revival yeah that's yeah yeah you were the day yes. revival to revival yes. if we could leave with anything that's that's a great place to leave and so we'll we'll do that um Uh, make sure you stay connected with us folks we we uh want to stay connected with you and if you've got you know things going on or prayer requests you could you could um you could uh, let those be known through personal messages as well and uh, whether we have time to answer everyone i do promise that we'll read all of them and i do promise you that we will pray if you've got things going on in your life that you want us to pray about but um we are super excited i i uh for those who are in the the ogden market we are going to have a good friday service tomorrow night and uh, so that's going to be exciting exciting it's a drive through communion service and so oh, i yeah. i am super excited about this where we can have um, a time to to share communion with you and a time to pray over each one of the people that come come through and so if you're in the ogden area um we are going to be starting it from 6:30 until 7:30 we wanted to make sure everybody was off work and could come and uh, the daylight is in great shape at that time here with all the summertime months coming upon us but We want to welcome you. So, God bless you guys, Chaitan. God bless you. Say hello to Thank you, you Pastor of the Pride. We will connect with you later as well, but uh, God bless you guys. Have a great great afternoon. From survival to revival, plug into the kingdom. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank yeah, you. amen. Amen.